Hi guys. So we just got back from sitting in the International Indian Treaty Council and the UN conference today on human rights and human rights violations and treaty rights and inherent rights. And we were there for the good portion of the day, of, I would say about nine hours. And it was, I don't know if you guys actually watched any of the live feeds that I posted to my women's indigenous media page, but it, there was a lot of information and there was a lot of heavy information that um, I think a lot of people at camp and a lot of people across the United States and across the world could benefit from. And I think that... I want to get these two, uh, their opinion on what they learned today and how it affected them because it's going to affect everybody else differently, especially people that have been through human rights violations or have had it happen to them or they witnessed it. But I think giving us the tools and the resources that we need to be able to identify when these things occur and what to do from there. Because when you do see human rights violations like we've seen a lot at Standing Rock, I think a lot of people don't know what to do after that. What's the next step? So here is Stephen Jeff Christian. How you guys doing today? My name is Stephen Jeff Christian. Um, I'd like to first, uh, first and foremost thank uh, Brooke and um, her, her media team for uh, uh, being able to bring light to this, uh, this is very important. And, and uh, Brooke was asked to, to document exactly what's going on for us water protectors. We have many, many civil uh, human right violations that we've incurred during our stand here at Standing Rock. And from what I gathered today and, and all the, the, the resources of the people talking and the education is that we need to put in the correct wording. Otherwise, we're not going to be taken seriously. The, the importance of how to document, how to uh, pursue this, pursue our rights, uh, in, in a court of opinion that will that will hold us that can give us that that the, our words because right now we're just being violated against we're getting shot we don't have much of a voice if we have anyone to go to you know the people that are shooting us are the people that we're supposed to report to and how it doesn't work it's it's confusing so this conference from what it from what I've gathered is to to teach us how to properly document for maximum effectiveness through our statements and uh, the acts that we've gone through and uh, so you get to so you get to witness firsthand because a lot of us we don't know about the court system I've never been a part of a court system too much uh, just a simple life. I just raised kids and that's it. But now going forward and, and witnessing some of the atrocities that, that have befallen our people, how do you document it? Who do you document it to? Who's listening? Who do we listen to? You know, I, for myself, I, I'm naive on those things, but, uh, through these, through these workshops, uh, I hope to, educate myself because our voice is important every every voice all of our voices that we've uh, learned and here we can we can put we've been violated you know and I hope that we can all take these things and and use them so that we can bring our story to the forefront and that's that's kind of what I got today on um uh, a little bit yeah. today. And just to kind of clarify what he is saying, um, the chair of the UN was here today and his interpreter, he gave a speech about 
the importance of people coming forward and actually telling their story and to have it documented in the correct way so that something can be done about it. It's not going to be any instant ramifications, but if we keep documenting these occurrences because we're starting to see them all over the country and these things have been happening all over the world for a long time. And I didn't, I was unaware until going to the workshop today, how often these militarized police states that um, use these crowd control tactics, how long they've actually been doing this to people all over the world. Cause we don't hear about it in mainstream media and giving us the resources and the tools and the correct way of actually going about and telling our story to be heard and to have it documented properly for United Nations to start seeing that this isn't, you know, just any isolated case. This is happening a lot so that they can build their case and hopefully we'll see some accountability at the end of the day, but we have to do it in the right way. And just like he said, you know, a lot of people didn't know what to do after our human rights were violated because the police are the entity that we're supposed to go to to report these ty types of things. And if they're the ones that are violating our human rights, then where do we go from there? So these types of things um, are good knowledge to have to educate ourselves and to build. It's a, it's a part of the healing process as well to be able to tell your story and let it out in a healthy way and have somebody document it where it's gonna go towards seeing some accountability and not reacting off of emotion because there's a lot of people at camp that have a lot of healing to do. And we've seen that in the last week and a half. And so, and we also, are, we have Kaylee here too. And she was there helping me all day today. So what did you learn? What did you take from today's conference? I got a lot from it. Um, it was very emotional. Um, watching slides of different things, different atrocities that go on in other places. And you feel like that could never happen here. And we need to let the world know what's happening here. We need everything documented, just as you've said. Another important thing that was emphasized towards the end was that um, there are other ways that human rights can be violated, not just with the rubber bullets and tear gas. Mm -hmm. Our sacred sites are being desecrated. Mm -hmm. That is a human rights violation. Um, that is why we're here in the first place. That mm -hmm. is what brought people here. Um, environmental racism. They talked about environmental racism. And just mm -hmm. as an example to give you guys, um, with Dakota Access Pipeline, was supposed to go through Bismarck. And Bismarck does not have a large indigenous population. And they did not want Dakota Access Pipeline putting the pipeline there because they didn't want it tainting their water supply. So why put it near a reservation? You know, that's, that's a, an example of environmental racism. And I didn't even know that existed until today. You know, and tomorrow... Tomorrow is going to be the hearings. Tomorrow is when the chair of the United Nations is going to hear water protectors' stories of their human rights violations. And we're going to live stream tomorrow. Um, we might not live stream all the testimonies. Whoever feels comfortable with getting their story out, we will be there to live stream it. But is there anything else you wanted to say? Just that um, don't be afraid to come forward and tell your story. Um, we have a unique opportunity right now to get this out. And they're here and they're willing to listen. And this needs to be documented. And we all need to be there for each other right now and be supportive, be more understanding. Even if people are going through something and maybe being a little out of character lately, try and be understanding of what we're all going through. Um, PTSD is real. Mm -hmm. um, I have some close friends right now that are very heavily affected by it and um, we all just need to be there for each other yeah definitely and I think that like I said you know giving a testimony whether you're just you're giving a testimony for the United Nations or if you're giving or you're just telling your story to other people 
you know, that's part of the healing process and it's part of going through those emotions in a healthy way instead of reacting like we've seen because that's not, that's not healing. You're just adding to the trauma and not only are you adding to the trauma, but you're doing it in a selfish way where you can possibly get other people hurt. And so I'm just saying I'm good. These workshops are a tool for you to utilize to possibly start that healing process. And I encourage everybody to, um, you know, if you can't come here, you can always watch the live feeds or even just go on the United Nations website. The, the majority of the speakers um, will have their transcripts on their website or they'll have, you know, the resources on there for you to um, utilize as well if you want to get your story out there so tomorrow's gonna be hard listening to um, the testimonies of the human rights violations um, today was kind of hard um, listening I didn't expect to feel that any type of way listening to the the director of the Human Rights Council talk about the crowd control tactics that militarized police states use because I think that a lot of us water protectors can um, relate to being desensitized to a lot of these actions that have been going on over the course of the last four or five months and when I was shown pictures today that were pretty graphic of places around the world that this is happening to children women children all types of people from all different races and cultures and backgrounds that I didn't realize how, I didn't realize the gravity of the situation because I was desensitized to it. I didn't realize that how violated I felt watching that whole slideshow because I was, we went through four of the, what was it, five or six crowd control tactics that he had talked about. And I think that everybody could benefit from having this information. And what you do with it will be up to you. You know, we can give you the information, but at the end of the day, it's up to you guys if you want to use that information to benefit or to heal. So I think that's all I have to say. Yeah, I just want to say one more quick thing. Only, only that <clears throat> what we're sharing must be shared. So please, if you can just take a break, share, 